Hey, Jeremy Cook here, and I decided I need to make a MIDI arcade controller, and I'm going to try to do it in one day. So, follow along to see how it works out. Let's see, what can I find? Ah, Pelican case, or a Harbor Freight, Harbor Freight Apache case. Put some holes here, 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 two rows of four, four things on that. These are some arcade buttons from quite a while ago. Now the whole whole reason I want to do this MIDI controller is I have this drum machine that I'm working on. And this will give me eight buttons for eight eight drums, and then maybe a couple option buttons as well. Blue blue buttons, and some black buttons. Now of course my my shop is uncharacter unchar uncharacteristically clean, so I did clean that up last night. The top of this Apache case, this this. And then I'll offset these just maybe like a half half circle off. And then maybe a couple a couple option buttons. That's kind of the idea. Of course we'll have wires, ground wires running all around, and then signals, and then we'll have an Arduino in the bottom. Assuming I can find that, which which I can. Probably use this. This board that just sticks right onto the Arduino Uno. Mm. Might be kind of cool, an e-stop button. Might be kind of neat to at least think about. Maybe one of these for an option button. Yeah. It's great to have all this stuff organized. You can just kind of go through and check it out when needed. Those will be kind of the heart of the electronics. Got my mechanicals over here. I bought this a long time ago for some other projects, so I guess it's not happening for that, but kind of drill in through there with the Forzner bits. I think it'll be one and an eighth. All right, just got most of my stuff here. So I'll have to take this apart. Switches are wired together. This should provide a bit of a shortcut. I've got all my stuff kind of kind of laid out, kind of thinking about how I'll do the project. These switches, on the bottom you've got a little common pin, and then on the top you've got a normally open switch. So I'll, I'll wire the commons into a uh, ground wire as a pull up, and then have this uh, basically pull it. No, wait. Yeah, that's right. I'll wire everything as a as the input pull up. You know, when you switch it, it'll turn it on and turn it low. I'll start from the middle of this arch right here, arch, to, to this. So spacing there is Six and a half inches, roughly. All right, so I was reading that incorrectly. It's actually six inches to there. So six divided by, by three is two, obviously. So, is it? Yeah, two, two, and two. Go just below that for the center because, well, kind of hard to drill exactly on there. So one and a one eighth inch Forzner bit. Might be easier to come from the other way. Yeah, that was much easier. Steep burning tools are uh, really good. I would recommend them for so many uses. Right now it's 847 and I'm pretty happy with how things are turning out. Um, I've got my eight buttons here, but I'm thinking it'd be cool to have uh, you know, an option button and an e-stop on one side so I can kind of press this in how I, I want. And then on the other side I'll have my MIDI, MIDI output. I feel like I'm on track still, so. Nice. All right, so after a few more minutes of work, I have an e-stop button and an option button on the side. And these on the top, something on this. Push it down, and then you gotta twist it to pull it out. It's meant to be a safety button. But in this case, it'll probably be a power button or maybe a, maybe just something for the MIDI out, output.
plan is cut up a USB cable and I'll run it around, basically run into this so I can cut the power off with that. And then that in turn will power the uh, Arduino Uno. And since I don't have one of those uh, jacks that goes here for MIDI, I'm gonna cut up one of these and make it just be kind of like a dongle that hangs out. This isn't my greatest wiring work ever. Goes through, and that just barely goes through. So in theory, when I have this pulled out, it should power the Arduino from a USB source, and then when I push it in, it won't. Ah. Got a little ridge here to clock it, so I probably need to use a file on this or something. Just barely. I didn't think that would work. Nice. Probably would have been better to test this before I actually put it on there, but I guess we'll see what happens. Ah, look at that. Well, you know. And works perfectly. I guess I'll test it on this. Single light in there, all good. Well, it's 10.15, I'm making some progress and my shop is, my garage is dirty, as, as usual. I don't know if cleanup's gonna be part of this project or it's gonna be kind of a, something I do later. What I'm gonna do is put some zip ties through here and mount the Arduino as well as a uh, little battery pack to the other side there, yeah, right here. Yeah, nice and secure. Okay, it's a little hard to see, but when I pull the, pull the button out, you can see the light there. Push it on, it goes off. So successfully using the e-stop as a power relay or power switch. So at this point, I guess I need to figure out where all these wires go and, and hook them up appropriately. Fortunately, I have these pins mapped out for another project. I'll go to two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those for the inputs. Still got the e-stop and then I'll hook the common up as well. All right, so I'm wiring this up with screw connectors. I can just plug this into the female headers. Hopefully this will work. Never tried this particular operation before. It's a little bit easier to do it on the, on the table here, or so I hope. All right, so that's hooked up. Just gotta solder this on. And um, yeah, should be just about right. Just about ready to go hardware-wise. Good. I'll solder this up, stick it in, and then I'll have to figure out something with the MIDI. 1118, it makes a pr pretty good progress. The, uh, the box looks pretty much done, except for the all-important MIDI output. I don't really have any sort of connector that bolts onto here, so in this case, I, I've got a um, cut-up male and female MIDI plug, so I'm going to use this to plug in there and then have this kind of hanging off. Once I get that connected, I should be already start troubleshooting. So here I'm going to zip tie this up, providing a um, somewhat of a strain relief, so it won't come out or or go in, I guess, too. And here I made this hole fairly small so that I can maybe adjust this later, drill it out how I need it. And then I'm going to attach these with some uh, lever nuts, probably, so I can redo it if needed, because I'm not entirely sure about the whole configuration. So in theory, this device is done hardware-wise and it's time to start testing everything. It's, uh, well, what time is it? It's now 11.35, so I feel like I'm making pretty good progress, but, you know, it's always uh, details that get you. And, you know, probably something's not quite right, but pretty good, I'm gonna have some lunch and then uh, get back to it after lunch, some actual programming. Yeah. 
and I'm back from lunch. What I need to do now is program this thing and first test to see if it'll take MIDI. If I program it, then I can see if it actually transmits MIDI through this to my computer. So that's what I'll do. And there it goes. Now, moment of truth to see if it actually uh, spits out any MIDI stuff. It is blinking at least, so that's a good that's a good sign. MIDI to USB converter, and then I'll use MIDI Q. Oh, look at that! That's awesome. So yeah, note F sharp velocity 127. So if I change it to C, see, so, yep, it's doing what it needs to be doing. Now I'm gonna load up GarageBand, and it'll hopefully just play out notes on on this. Not getting a signal here. Hmm. It's curious that it's doing it on the computer, but not on my phone. I think there's maybe something with the uh, USB-C that's not quite right. Should be blinking. So looking at the mini spec again, I noticed that I've got two wires connected, but from the output you actually need to ground. It's actually only working when it was plugged into the USB from my computer, which would kind of make sense. So I'm going to go ahead and solder these on here, and then find what the ground is and solder that up to it. Hopefully, it'll work after that. Well, excellent news, I soldered in the, um, the connections along with the ground connection, which was missing. Put everything back, mostly electrical how it was supposed to be, and it is giving me some um, some notes out, so that's awesome. It's working, mostly. This guy adapted the code from another MIDI project I'm working on and put it on here. Fantastic. I feel like I've uh, met the requirements of the MIDI, minimum viable MIDI device. But there's still a few more things that I want to do, like maybe uh, do something with this, this blue button. You've got common on the bottom side, or normally open on the middle, and then you've got plus and minus on the on the side. I think I'll wire the two, two bottom as well as the side things, and then I can make that into a light and a little switch for, for something else. Should be able to plug this into a ground and an input. You can pretty good. Put this on the five volts and ground. Oh, look at that! Useful already. It shows it's on. It's pretty nice. So it's now three fourteen, and I would consider myself to have something that I call a minimum MIDI device. It's uh, got uh, eight buttons. Turn the uh, the blue thing into a uh, pitch bend key. A little over seven hours from start to finish, or less than that if you take out my lunch. Of course my garage is pretty filthy still, so I need to clean that up. Now I am going to hook this up to my robotic drum that I'm working on, but kind of for another video. Well, I couldn't resist. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, we're going to be making that, so do subscribe and maybe check that out. I'm sure there'll be a link up if it's done. Hopefully it is done. 